I am Murtada El Fadl, and I'm here with Jordan Cooper, the playwright of Ain't No More. <laughs> Hi, Jordan. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm cold, but I am good. Excited <laughs> <laughs> to talk to you about this play, which is coming to the public. Yes. And I wanted first to ask you, why and when did you start writing this play? So I started writing it in the summer of 2016. Um, it was right when Philando Castile and Alton Sterling got like murdered within a week of each other and then the Dallas incident happened. Um, and I just started to find myself um, in a basically a depression. Um, mm -hmm. I almost wish I could just call in black that day. <laughs> it's just say, hey, somebody got shot, I'm calling in black. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it, you just don't want to get out of your bed, one, out of sadness, two, out of fear. Um, and I, I couldn't do anything, really. Um, and I'm the kind of person who wants to laugh. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like at funerals, like wanting to laugh. Um, like, why does her wig look like two squirrels are having sex <laughs> with each other on top of her head? And yeah. why is she wearing a bra and she's gone six feet under for the rest of eternity? <laughs> um, that kind of stuff. Um, so I wanted to find something to laugh about because like as much pain as um, we deal with um, being black, we're so resilient. Um, and we're so joyful. Mm -hmm. There's so much joy, like that's just, God just like sewed into our DNA naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to find a way to take that joy and take that pain and kind of find a way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a lot of ways it was therapy for me, it started out as. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Stevie, my director, I remember bringing pages to him because I was just like, there's this thing, I don't know what it is, but I'm just gonna write it. And then I like showed it to him and he was like, brother, this is a play. And I was like, it is a play, but like, who is going to pay to see this play? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, nobody's going to come see this damn play. <laughs> uh, but I kept writing it anyways, and I didn't give a damn, you know? I was yeah. like, let me just write it anyways. And I just had a good time um, writing it, and I uh, shed a few tears. I always like to tell people, like, I, I feel like I cried and laughed with the same tear, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it felt so, um, so releasing, yeah. you know, to, yeah. to kind of let that out and mm -hmm. explore those questions in a way. Yeah. I remember the night of the, the election, Trump's election, mm -hmm. talking about those tears and the pain. I remember like crying, hugging my family, mm -hmm. and just going to bed hoping that this was um, a bad dream, a terrible dream that I will wake up from. Yeah. And I'm assuming, you know, you started this in 2016, so right before that, like that night, what were you feeling? Was it one of the things that helped you in writing the play? I remember, I don't remember much about that night, but I'm gonna tell you what I remember. I remember going to the local liquor store and getting a big ass bottle of barefoot wine mm -hmm. and just setting it on my dresser and watching the news. And it was almost like my eyes were like slowly closing as darkness just started coming in and coming in and coming in and coming in. And then I went to sleep and I woke up and I was like, you, I hope that it was a dream. Mm -hmm. um, and then I woke up and I started to think, I was like, we've been through way worse. Mm -hmm. We've been through way worse. Because the difference is, is that the presidents and the people sitting in the White House or in Congress or in the Senate before, Satan was hiding in the bushes. Mm -hmm. And now Satan is butt ass naked running through the streets. Um, so, showing their face. Exactly. So it, it's, it's, it's just out there now. I always, I always like to tell people, white women were so mad. When that, they were so <laughs> mad. I just love seeing white women mad. I, I just love it. They just like to shake up the world. Because I was like, white women got to feel what black women been feeling for the mm -hmm. past 400 years for one day. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, but I, I just remember, I was in the middle of writing the play mm. and figuring out the structure and figuring out characters. And then when he won, um, originally it was just gonna be like, oh, we going back to Africa, da, 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 da. like, let's get the fuck out of here, right? If I can yeah. say that. Mm -hmm. um, but then it turned into, no, my great grandmama's body is on this soil. Her mm. blood has been spilled on this soil. And for me to leave that soil, um, there's there's something that belongs to me that I have mm -hmm. to fight for. Mm -hmm. I have to continue a fight. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the debate that I had with myself. And that's 
kind of what I'm playing with in the play is uh, basically it's an excuse to argue with myself in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. Um, Cause I see things in a lot of in a lot of dual ways. It's like yes, let's get the fuck out of here, but also mm -hmm. like like let's let's fight, let's stand mm -hmm. our ground, um, and so that's that's kind of what I wanted to do with this play and kind of figure out what is the best option, um, and hopefully people come check it out and find mm -hmm. out for themselves what the yeah. best option is. Yeah. So on the flip side of that, if we want to go you know, four years before that, you know, or, you know, eight years before that. The play is sort of described as taking place at a time when we are hurting from the promise of a black president. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to, to ask you, you know, going off that sort of concept of promise, mm. what do you think the promise of America is for people of color? What has it been? What should it be? What has changed? What is the promise of America? Or what should be the promise of America? Um, it should be freedom. Mm -hmm. It should be the ability to be, the ability to live, the ability to um, be as ratchet as you want, be <laughs> as joyful as you want, be as loud as you want, um, and still have this American dream. It's being able to walk outside of your door um, and not fear not coming back home. Mm -hmm. um, I used to, my mom used to always tell me, make sure you got on clean underwear. Just, I was like, that's the most morbid <laughs> thing. Oh my goodness. But I was like, everybody had to have that talk. Everybody had mm -hmm. to have that talk. Um, all of my uh, friends of color, it's like your parent has to tell you like, you know, like you can't be acting like your white friend. You know, you, you when you go outside this house, you need to act a certain way. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Um, and I don't think that's what America should be. I think that's what it was built on, and mm -hmm. I think that's what we're feeling the repercussions of. Is what it was built on. Um, but that's what the promise of America is right now. Mm -hmm. But. In a lot of ways, America was built by those people who I talk about, whose blood is spilt on the soil. Mm -hmm. So they're the promise of America. We're the promise of America. Our dream to to fight back against what that original promise is is the promise, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think it's our duty to make sure that that promise comes true. Mm -hmm. And we pinky promise to. Do you to think it has changed? Sisters. Do I think it has changed mm -hmm. from its from, original? From when you were from its original, yeah. Yes, it has changed. We've grown, we've grown, we've learned, um, but there's just still a lot of learning to do. And I'll tell you what the repercussions of Trump is in office because Obama was in prison, it was in the White House. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 all payback for for having a black president in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. We went yeah. too far, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, and I think I think we just have a long way to go. Um, every time we look up and the sun is up, we realize that the moon is coming six hours later. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. And that's what happened with him. Um, it's 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 a journey. Cause mm -hmm. like when you think about it, right? Like slavery ended mm -hmm. and the Civil Rights Act passed, and mm -hmm. that wasn't by choice. No. That wasn't by that. That's not everybody <laughs> in America voted. Let's give the Negroes their rights. Yeah. No, that was like you have to give the Negroes yeah. their rights. Mm -hmm. So. We're, what we're witnessing now is a phasing out, but mm -hmm. unfortunately that phasing out is raising children. Yeah. Um, and their children are seeing this man in the White House and they are empowered by this man in the White House. Mm -hmm. um, Voldemort. Uh, <laughs> That's a good name for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he, he shall not be named. Um, yeah, so we just, got, we, just gotta, we just gotta fight. That's all mm -hmm. we can do. That's yeah. all we can do is fight back against that every day. Wake up in the morning, put your gloves on, you know? You know, as an African immigrant, what I loved about your play is that it goes beyond um, the idea of an American nationality, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about being black, beyond an American nationality and encompassing all other identities. Mm -hmm. Because we know, you know, right. we know the limitations of a national identity when you're black or brown. Right. Can you right. talk about exactly. that? Exactly. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's like we're all we're all brown, we're all black, we're all a target. 
<laughs> we're yes. all a target. You know what I mean? I say, like I tell people, people. We can't change our faces. Right? We can't. We can't. The clan is coming after our ass. <laughs> all right? No matter what you eat, no matter what language you speak. All right? Uh, so it's like, it's like black is so complex. Uh, it's not just this one thing that's reserved to a land. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's it moves like water it moves like water it's in constant movement it looks different um, and it acts different and it speaks different mm -hmm. and it sings different and it dances different um, and so that's what I wanted to kind of celebrate in a way and that's all in the play yeah celebrate in a way hopefully so hopefully people will come celebrate with us yes. <laughs> yeah. and talking of celebration I wanted to ask you the play is peppered with, you know, a lot of pop culture references and mm. black cultural voices. So can you tell me a little bit about your cultural influences and just, you know, what fun pop culture things you like to consume? Yeah, so I'm a baby of pop culture. <laughs> I'm a baby of pop culture. And I feel like black people are black, black pop culture, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's just it, really like that's... That in the play is just so me. Whenever I hear it, sometimes I'll hear it back, and I'll be like, "Damn, that's me." <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like, um, like everything from uh, James Baldwin to Whitney to uh, Beyonce to mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. everything that's kind of in this world, um, and that's just kind of what I think uh, has influenced what pop culture is now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everybody's trying to be that in a way. Um, as far as like what I consume, I consume like I consume Wendy Williams. I consume <laughs> The View. I consume, you know, what I mean? like I'm that I'm that kind of guy. I'm a, a 78 year old white woman uh, in the morning time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so you mentioned James Baldwin and the play sort of mentions Billie Holiday. So I mm -hmm. wanted to ask you just, those are just two of the many names in the play. So I wanted to ask you what sort of segments of James Baldwin would you like people to hear in the play? Or what, what will be? Yeah, you know? so, so it's between me and Stevie. So, so the thing is we like, we like both have our like very seminal things from those people. Mm -hmm. So it's it's always like a thing between the both of us. Uh, most of the time I'll come with, with what I have on the table, it's already in the script. Um, but it's always so uh, cool to like hear other people's memories of those people. Mm -hmm. Cause I have my own like with um, James Bowen on the Dick Cavett show, that clip of him. Oh, yeah. you, know, yes. you know what I mean? <laughs> that, Have you seen the documentary last year? Yes, I'm Not Your Negro, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, he, he, was a, he was a master. He was mm -hmm. a master. We have so many masters. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's this point, in the, there's this character in the play, Miss Bag. Mm -hmm. And she's basically the carrier of everything black. Mm -hmm. um, of every black event, of every black song, of every mm -hmm. black dance, of every black language. Um, she's kind of the carrier of this thing um, and all of those people live within her. Um, so like uh, like along with them, there's just like hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of other um, things that we have fun with in the show that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I think Promise me you will hear some Whitney, maybe Billy Holiday. Oh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> trust me. Trust me. You'll get enough of it. <laughs> so I want to change gears a little bit. Um, there is um, so much talk in media, film, journalism, mm -hmm. stage about um, authenticity and representation mm -hmm. in storytelling. So where do you see this play fitting into that? Um, this play is... Uh, is what I like to like describe as a cookout in a lot of ways. Um, like it's not necessarily built for the theater. It's not necessarily built for um, the institution that we know it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really I just wanted to have a good time, um, and I wanted to uh, to have some real fun conversations and um, complex conversations. Um, and it's, it's just real to me and my heart. Um, I'm not a person who can fabricate anything. Um, so I, a CV always talks about my work being chitlins on fine china, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of thing uh, where everybody's welcome. Uh, not everybody's invited, but mm -hmm. you, if you knock on the door and you come in and you make yourself a play and you want to sit down and have a conversation, this let's is. talk. Let's have a good time. <laughs> we might even teach you to keep it shuffle. <laughs> Yeah. Um, 
So um, one last thing I wanted to ask you about, since yeah. we're talking about representation in the media. Mm -hmm. So The Handmaid's Tale yeah. um, has become sort of a cultural comparison to where when many women fear mm -hmm. the country is heading. Mm -hmm. Do you think of Ain't No Mo as your sort of idea of what you worry the country is heading for black people? Absolutely, absolutely. Ain't No Mo is um, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's scary. Can be. It can be. <laughs> <laughs> it can be, but we gotta we gotta be ready for it. Yeah. We gotta be ready for it. Um, but that's what the play um, is for me. Uh, it is revelations. It is uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now. So can you tell me what? Um, what ideas you you talk we talked a lot about the yeah. play. What what ideas you specifically wanted to push with the play? Oh, what ideas did I specifically want to push? Um, I uh, really wanted to um, push blackness in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to push my um, my. I have, this isn't a plan, but I have something that I wrote that I would mm -hmm. like to read to you, if okay. that's okay. Yes, um, I would love it that. It kind of explains everything. In a way. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. This is so unorthodox. <laughs> so basically, someone asked me um, why I write, mm -hmm. uh, why I do the work. Um, and this was kind of me just like thinking about that question and writing it down, if you don't mind me sharing. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, please. Yes, so um, I want the person in the back of the line to have their presence and importance felt in the front of the line. I want to shout from the mountaintop that thing that Granny wouldn't let me say. I want the wound inside of me to know that the person who made it is human too. I want my niece to know that too much God lives in her midnight skin not to praise it. I want to never be too financially comfortable that I become comfortable with not saying the uncomfortable. I want my uncomfortable to be my uncomfortable and not one that's just a selling point just to get rich white people in the seats who get off on being uncomfortable. I want to remain a soldier in the army of the Lord. I want to remain a soldier in the army of blackness. I want to remain a soldier in the army of knuck a few buck, never too much, before I let go, last two dollars, wobble, Al Green, Whitney Houston, Anita Baker, Beyonce, and everyone else who's played at the family cookout. I want to remain a soldier to the boy who thought the Lord hated his want to love another boy who thought the Lord hated him. I want to remain a soldier in the army of not giving any kind of fuck. I want to let the theater be the church that it is meant to be. I want to let the theater know that they can shout when they want to shout. I want to let the theater know that black women make the air we breathe in. I want to let the theater know that white people ain't got to be in everything. I want to let the theater know that it don't always have to look like theater. I want to let the theater know that my great, 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 great uncle who was lynched by the Klan is also in the house tonight to have a good time. I want to let the theater know that it's okay to shake your ass and watch yourself. I want to let the theater know that chitlins can be served on fine china. I want, to, I want my soul to know me and God still have a lot of work to do. I want my soul to know that it's okay to cry sometimes and that my characters will cry for me when I run out of tears. I want my soul to know that God is also in the struggle. I want my soul to know that it has permission to move to the front of the line. Wow. And that's wow. kind of, that's kind of, well, ain't no more. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, for me. And what a perfect way to end this conversation. Thank you so much for talking with Thank me today, Jordan. Thank you for Jordan. having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Come see the show! <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'll be there. Yes. <laughs>